Hi guys. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. <laughs> um, can I have a show of hands? Um, who doesn't like interviews? And who likes interviews? So these are the people, uh, those people who you need to go to if you have problem with interviews. Those who like. So who am I? Okay, this is me when I attended my first junior dev uh, meetup. Um, so I started out as a, an Android developer in Singapore three years ago, and I transition into a full stack role in my second company, which is a fintech startup called Bonlink. And two months ago, I decided I need another career change for better opportunities. So I worked really hard, like studying for coding interviews, uh, try uh, like different competitive programming um, uh, problem solving on like HackerRank and LeetCode. And also, in the end, I landed a job in Tokyo, also in fintech industry, also as a full stack developer, but um, yay, in different place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's called Alpaca Japan. So this is the first thing you see when you enter the, the office. And you see these tiny little Alpaca plushies. Okay, so um, today I'll be talking about the mistakes I did in my past interviews. So there's a lot of uh, trials and errors in the journey. And uh, I'll be sharing what I should really have done instead. And uh, proper step-by-step -step guidelines on how to do better at tech interview. And the conclusion. Okay. <laughs> So, okay, so let me tell you a story. Um, I think like when I was a fresh graduate, I, like, I, I was very desperate to get a job in Singapore because I was, in, uh, I was from Malaysia and you know the currency is really different and I hope to um, land a job here for um, better money, better opportunities, better uh, room to grow. And uh, I just messed uh, submitted my resume to many different companies and I didn't even care what they are, what they do. And, and when I get uh, the reply, um, uh, there's this, uh, this uh, HR that uh, told me, okay, uh, congratulations, uh, we, we decide to proceed to the next stage, which is a casual video call. So, they say casual video call, so I didn't take it as serious. Like I didn't think about it as a, a formal interview. I, I, maybe I, like, I was like thinking, okay, maybe it's just a, a video call to introduce myself as a student uh, and uh, um, like why I'm interested in the company and things like that. So I didn't really do any homework to study about the company and the, the role that I was applying to is application developer. I sort of know that, okay, I need to uh, have basic knowledge about uh, Java and Android Studio, and I had experience doing that, so I was like, okay, you should be fine. But the interview, the video call came, and uh, she asked me a lot of uh, basic questions, like uh, introductions and stuff. And I remember she asked me this, um, have you, checked, have you downloaded our application, Android application? And I was like, shit, I didn't. <laughs> it was quite an established company, and I think many of you probably use it, but I didn't. <laughs> and, uh, but it makes me really bad if I say no, because I, I, I went there for an interview, I applied for the job, and, and if I say no, it makes me feel like um, I'm actually not interested in the company and I might not get a job. So, um, so I said yes. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, she asked me, um, what do you think we can improve the app? I was like, shit, I don't know anything about the app. 
<laughs> and in the end, um, I just say uh, nothing. So it made me feel really bad about it. The, the experience is so bad. The interview is so bad. And uh, also, I think that um, my introduction was always too simple. When asked to um, introduce myself, I always say, like, I'm a full stack developer. Like, back then, I say I'm an Android developer. But now I say I'm a full stack developer who, um, who is strong in C++, uh, JavaScript, Java, and stuff like that. It's just a simple one-liner. And it doesn't really leave a strong impression for the interviewer. And I did this so many times. I didn't realize it until two months ago when my colleague told me, no, you, should, you shouldn't say that. It's too simple. It's, it shows that you are lacking depth, which is no, not good at all, which is a big no-no. So this is what I should have done instead. So it's very clear that you should do your homework well. And you have to be genuine, genuine about learning about the company and working with them before you apply for the job. Don't waste people's time. And you always have to emphasize on the impact, the problem you solve, the values you bring to the company or to the society or whatever. Just um, good things that you have done. Just emphasize on, on good things you have done. And talk about the big picture, like the entire application, the system architecture, number of clients, problem solved, impact, before narrowing down to the specific modules that you have worked on. For example, like instead of the one-liner, I'm a full-stack developer that likes C++, JavaScript, you can say, I'm a full-stack developer who is working in BondLink, uh, and we uh, develop a bond trading platform for five clients in three countries, and the traders, sales people, and clients are using our application to trade bonds, to communicate with each other. So it gives you a, a stronger impression if I, if I tell you what I do, what problems I solve, rather than what language I like. Of course, you can say what language you like, but leave it to the later part. So after you um, make a stronger impact in your, your um, interviewer's heart, you can then maybe talk about your passion, why you like coding. Yeah, this is what I think. So um, we'll move on to the steps to uh, do better at tech interview. So this is what I find useful for me. Like after uh, learning from my mistakes and actually improving it, I find that I do better at interviews and have better chance at uh, getting a job. So, okay, first, do your homework. You should study about the company, know, that, uh, know what they do, what tech stack they use, what's the main responsibility of the roles, and also the interview process. It's very important to know the interview process because the interview process differs from uh, company to company. And uh, there could be tech interview at first, then cultural fit interview, and there may be pair programming interview, can be anything at all. And you should be clear about the interview process before you start to interview, going into interview. And next, um, you have to understand what values you can bring to the company, because they are not going to give you money if you do nothing. You, yeah. So um, try to understand what you are lacking. Try to um, find out what you need to learn or what you need to improve to um, better deliver the results to the organization. Also, OK, um, this part is important for programmers and developers like you guys. Um, there are so many things to learn in computer science field. And um, many times, uh, you may not be able to recall some simple computer science concept or like uh, terms you might need to revise because you don't actually have to use it in your line of work. So it's always important to revise on the fundamental knowledge, like data structures, 
the computer science concepts, methodologies, algorithms, and also those um, real world skills, but um, they might, might have become rusty because you didn't have to use it, but you might need it in your next job. So revise on them, keep uh, brushing up on your skills, and read up uh, about your skills, your programming language that you like. If you say you are an expert in Java, you should be, you'll be expected to know what's new in the field. And if the company like tech giants like uh, Google, Facebook, they focus on academic knowledge intensively, so you will definitely need to spend a lot of time going to competitive programming websites to keep like, solving problems on like, data structures, algorithms. You have to keep practicing them. It's good to have a checklist to know, like, um, OK, I've studied, uh, uh, I don't know, merge sort, bucket sort, what's next? So you, you need to keep track of what you have studied and what you need to study. And these are the resources that I found useful, Cracking the Coding Interview book. I guess everyone knows about it. Who doesn't know? Who doesn't know this green book? OK. OK, now you know. So <laughs> go buy it. It's really useful. I think it's really useful if you want, if you want to get into uh, tech giants. And also, these are the websites that you can use to uh, solve problems for free. Um, next. So you should be able to predict um, common job interview questions easily. But um, I think many people don't do this, but it's good to always like, predict what they are going to ask, prepare a few sets of questions, rehearse them. Because uh, you might have the answer already within you, like in somewhere in your, in your brain, but um, don't forget about like, brain freeze. You might get brain freeze in your interview, <laughs> and you might like, just forget about well, whatever like, the project you have done in the past. So it's very important to prepare the answers beforehand and rehearse them and try to memorize a little bit. And so you would sound more confident in your, uh, in your interview when you're answering the questions. And also like uh, common questions like strengths and weaknesses, questions regarding your resume and regarding your work. OK, so now that we have done all the preparation, you have to be really confident in your interview. So <laughs> don't be like me now. <laughs> <laughs> don't be nervous. And always smile. Uh, watch your body language. And be sincere, kind, and friendly. And if you have um, issues with uh, anxiety or stress, nervous, you can always try to imagine your interviewer is your colleague or friend. Yeah. So everyone's my friend now. <laughs> so I feel less nervous. <laughs> and saying I don't know is better than making up answers. It will make you lose to it. So don't do that. Don't, don't make up answers. Don't lie. Just say you don't know when you don't know. And um, OK, this is a very good TED Talk by Amy Cardi. It's called Fake It Till You Make It. Has anybody watched it? Show of hands? Only you? Oh, OK. OK, you guys should really watch this, because um, uh, it's very, very useful to, uh, uh, it's very useful to uh, gain confidence from this video. Like, after you watch this video, you will feel that, oh, you are not alone. And uh, there are ways to help you boost that confidence level. So in conclusion, interviewing is a skill that can be improved with practice. And um, I encourage everyone to keep practicing so that you can demonstrate your best self comfortably. And to do that, um, you have to study about the company well. Um, you have to um, brush up on your skills, or your technical knowledge, computer science basics. And um, what was the point? What's the point? Anyone knows? <laughs> Are you not paying attention? <laughs> uh, OK, it's very important to predict the questions, rehearse the answers, and lastly, be confident.
Yeah, that's all. And this is uh, an extra slide. slide. So um, nowadays, developers are encouraged to know more than what he does, like the, the, the scope that he usually works on. It's very important to know the bigger, bigger picture, like uh, how to develop a good system, how to build a good software. So uh, I find these principles or concepts very important to build a, a, well, like, uh, a, a good application. And also CI/CD, automated testing, um, um, software development methodologies like Agile, XP, good practices like code review, pair programming. These are very important to know. So if you have time, um, join Junior Dev Talks because uh, from time to time we'll share about uh, all these things that uh, we feel developers should know. And that's all from me. Thank you.